Hello everybody and thank you for joining me for this Shabbat Shabbat Rasha. It is a very old custom to have uh, an explanation of the laws of a Yom Tov as it approaches and our practices on Shabbat Shuva, the Shabbat between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, to have an exposition of the laws around that time of year. I propose therefore this year to look at a question that is particularly relevant this year, which is whether it is permitted to shake the Arba Minim, the Lul of an Etrog, while wearing gloves. Uh, it is a sad reality that because of the coronavirus crisis that is around us, that uh, it is going to be very difficult for us to have Arba Minim sets shared between different people. And therefore, we people might wish to uh, hold the Arba Minim wearing gloves to avoid the risk of cross-infection. The point that I propose to investigate in some detail is whether this is indeed permitted in Jewish law. This is a technical discussion rather than something of a mystical or spiritual nature. And nonetheless, it is something which is a tremendous mitzvah for us to do. It is a, a great thing for Jewish people to learn Torah and especially to be conversant with Jewish law. And it is in this spirit and in the um, uh, uh, honour of the tradition that we follow that we look at this law now. So, our question again, is it permitted to shake the Arba Minim with gloves on? There is a discussion in the Gemara about shaking the Arba Minim from which we can derive an insight into this question. The Gemara is in Sukkah, Daf, Lamad Zayin, Amad Alaf, 37a, where two rabbis, Rabbah and Rava, dispute two cases. One is whether it is permitted to shake the Arba Minim if they are decorated, and the other is whether one, whether one may shake them with a cloth. In both cases, Rabbah rules strictly that one may not, and Rava rules leniently that one may. Rabbah forbids decoration of the Arba Minim between the hands and the Arba Minim, but Rava permits decorative wrapping even if it comes between the hands and the Arba Minim because it is decorative and therefore is not considered an extraneous thing that need concern us. It is effectively part of the Arba Minim. As for shaking the Arba Minim with a cloth, Rava permits the cloth because it is called Lekicha al Yudei Dava Acher, taking something through something else. He seeks to prove this from a procedure in the laws of the red heifer, a heifer being a cow. In temple times, when people had been in contact with a dead body, they had to undergo a complex and lengthy purification procedure before they were allowed to go onto Temple Mount or eat sacred foods such as part of an offering or the, the special tithe to be taken from produce given in the land of Israel. This purification procedure entailed sprinkling the person who wished to be purified with a mixture of the ashes of a red heifer which had been slaughtered and burned, and spring water. The sprinkling onto the person who wished to be purified of this ash and water mixture had to be done with a piece of hyssop, a kind of grass, dipped into the mix of ash and water and the mix of ash and water was kept in a special urn. Rava quotes a rule about dipping the hyssop in this mix, namely that one may attach the hyssop to a stick and dip it in the mix of ashes and water. He seeks to prove from here that just as the dipping of the hyssop need not be done directly by hand, but can be done with a stick attached to the hyssop, with the person doing the dipping holding the stick at the other end, so it is permitted to shave the Arab Aminim with a cloth. In both cases, one is handling the mitzvah object by means of something else. Toysus, one of the uh, medieval commentators on the Talmud, asks why Rava does not relate to the case in terms of chatzitza, something getting in the way between the Arba Minim and one hands. We are not talking about a decorative cloth, so surely Rava should forbid the use of the cloth as something that gets in the way. Why is Rava not worried about the cloth as a chatzitza, but just about whether this class is as lekicha aide dava acher, a proper taking of the Abba Minim? Taisus tackles this question initially by explaining his understanding of Rashi's approach. According to Taisus, Rashi says that Rava thinks that chatzitza does not apply when the thing in the way is wrapped around your hand. Since the cloth is on the hand of the person shaking the Arba Minim, it is not a chatzitza, it does not get in the way. Perhaps the thinking here 
is that the cloth is considered batal, it is auxiliary and void relative to the hand because it is around the hand. Therefore, it now classes as the permitted lekicha ayede dam acher. There is no question of chatzitza here. So the only problem to be resolved in this case is finding a source for permitting lekicha ayede dam acher. And this Rava seeks to prove from the case of dipping the hyssop with a stick. However, Tosus dismisses Rashi's explanation of the Gemara. He objects that Rava's proof should not be relevant because according to Rashi, Lekicha Aide Dava Acher can only happen if the thing one is using is wrapped around, around one's hand and therefore butter. Rava's case is different altogether since it talks about dipping hyssop by means of a stick held in one's hand rather than, of course, wrapped around one's hand. If Rashi's approach is clearly not that of Gemara, how are we to understand why Rava does not worry about the cloth being a chatzitza? Tosus tries saying that the cloth is not a chatzitza, is not a, an interposition, something that gets in the way and forbids one to perform the mitzvah, because the cloth is not relevant to the mitzvah, and only things that are relevant to the mitzvah are even acknowledged as existing, such that they could constitute a chatzitza, a forbidden interposition in Jewish law. But Tosus dismisses this as well, based on the discussion in the Gemara in Yoma. The Gemara in Yoma discusses whether, we, whether it would be permitted for a Kohen, a priest in the temple, to serve in the temple while standing on another Kohen's foot instead of the temple floor. Obviously, it's something that one would not generally seek to do, but it may happen if the area is crowded that a Kohen actually finds himself standing on another Kohen's foot as he performs the temple service. And the Gemara in Yoma discusses whether this is permitted. The Gemara says it would not be permitted because the Kohen whose foot is being stood on does not relinquish his foot to the Kohen standing on it. He will always see it as his own foot and therefore his foot is considered a chatzitza, an interposition between the serving Kohen's foot and the floor. According to Tosa's hypothesis, the foot should not matter since it is not relevant to the avoda, the temple service, being performed by the other Kohen. Clearly then, the fact that something is irrelevant to the mitzvah one seeks to perform does not permit us to disregard it if it is getting in the way. So likewise, we cannot disregard the cloth around the lulav simply because it is not part of the mitzvah. So again, we are back to our question. According to Rava, why are, ne- why are we not worried about the cloth being a chatzitza? Tosus comes up with an ingenious solution. He shifts our understanding of this case by saying that the cloth is neither wrapped around one's hand nor wrapped around the lulav. Rather, it is a holder which holds the the lulav but does not get between one's hand and the lulav since only the cloth is in one's hand and the lulav is sticking out from the cloth but is not encircled at all by the hand. Clearly, Tosu says that chatzitza is only so called when it gets in the way of something that would otherwise be held inside one's hand. Since, in this instance, only the cloth is held in one's hand, but the lulav is entirely beyond one's hand in the cloth, there is no question of chatzitza, and there is merely a question of the kicha ayde dava acher, which Rava then proceeds to justify from the case of the hyssop held, on, held with the stick. Tosus, however, should have a further problem with this. Later on in the Gemara, Rava says that one cannot do the mitzvah of Abba Minim by holding a lulav in a pot because it is undignified for the mitzvah and the Gemara says that it does not count as lekicha aide dava acher unless it is a dignified taking. According to Tosus, the dignified or undignified nature of the pot is the last thing that Rava should be worried about. It is, after all, a problem of chatzitza. Why, according to Tosus, is the, the, the situation of carrying a lulav in a pot or taking a lulav in a pot or shaking a lulav in a pot not also um, uh, bedeviled by the issue of chatzitza if one's holding the pot with a lulav inside. Surely one's hands are encircling the pot and the pot gets between the lulav and one's hands. So never mind whether the pot is a dignified means of carrying the lulav, there's a chatzitza problem. Tosus answers that we must say that the pot in that case is not being held from on top it is being held from underneath, rather like the holding the cloth. In our case, where one holds the cloth, but the lulav protrudes 
out of the top. This means that the pot is not between an encircling grip and the Arba Minim, but rather like the cloth in our case. The question therefore is only whether we could call it Lekicha Eide Dava Acher, and Rava says that this can only be done if the taking is done respectfully. So, thus far, we have Rashi, who says that if one will seek to take a lulu with a cloth, chatzita is only a problem when the cloth is around the thing one is taking, the lulu, but if the cloth is wrapped around one's hand, that is okay. And Rashi understands the Gemara to be talking about such a case, and the reason why Rava is not worried about chatzita is because we're talking about a, a, a cloth wrapped around one's hand. Tosu says that whether the, lula, the, the cloth is around the lulav or one's hand, it would be a problem of chatzitza in principle. However, Rabbi is talking about a case where the cloth is not actually um, holding the lulav in one's hand. One is only holding the cloth in one's hand and the lulav protrudes beyond one's hand held by the cloth. And therefore, Tosu would agree for a different reason that there is no question of chatzitza here. <coughs> Beis Yosef, a commentary on the Shulchan Aruch, quotes the Ran who has a different, sorry, Beis Yosef, which is a commentary on the Tor, quotes the Ran who has a different view altogether. The Ran might agree with Tosus that Chatzitza might apply whether the thing in the way is on one's hand or on the thing that one is taking, but the Ran disagrees with Tosus in another way, saying that there is actually no consideration of Chatzitza with Lulam at all. There is only the different requirement of Lekicha Tama, a proper taking of the Abba Minim, which can be done Aide Dama Acha through something else, provided, of course, as Rama says later, it is done in a respectful way. In the Kicha Tama parameters, ornaments are not a chatzitza as they are auxiliary to the thing that one is taking, and nor is a thing wrapped around one's hand as it, as it is auxiliary to one's hand, but something that is neither ornamental nor auxiliary to one's hand, such as a non ornamental cloth wrapped around the lulav breaches the requirements of the Kichatama. So presumably, Ran says like Toysfus that we are talking about a cloth that takes the lulav above one's hand, in which case it would be a proper Lekicha Ayyadeh Dava Acher. According to Ran, even Rabba and Rava's first dispute about an ornament on the Abba Minim will fit into this understanding. The term Chatzitza is not actually mentioned there, and according to the Ran, the whole dispute between Rabba and Rava is whether an ornament violates the requirements of Lekicha Tama. Rabbah says it does, Rava says it doesn't, and we follow Rava in Halakha, in Jewish law. Beis Yosef also quotes another opinion, the Aguda, who takes a very strict view, and says that anything in the way at all is considered a chatzitza, even if one is holding, wearing tefillin on one's hand, even if a woman is taking the lulav and she has rings on her fingers. In any case, uh, the Aguda says it would be a problem and everything must be removed. Even an incomplete chatzitsa is a problem. So what's the halacha? What is actually the position in Jewish law about um, uh, holding the Arba Minim with a cloth? The uh, Shukhra talks about this in Eira Chaim and here's what he says. If somebody makes a holder and puts their lulav in it and holds it, that is fine because taking something by something else is called taking provided that it is done respectfully. So far, we're familiar with all of this. However, if the taking is not done in a respectful way, such as holding the lulav in a container and waving it that way, one does not fulfill one's obligation. If one wraps a cloth around the lulav or wraps a cloth around one's hand and waves it, there are some who say one does not fulfill one's obligation. Ramad takes a strict view on this, he says that one should remove tefillin and rings from one's hand, following the view of the Aguda. However, strictly speaking, one need not be concerned about this, since the whole hand is not covered with them. So when we take out tefillin off um, before Hala and taking the lulav, that is really not entirely necessary. It's just to accommodate the structure of the Aguda, as recommended by the Ramah. So what's the deal with gloves? Here's what the Mishnah Bura says on our piece of Shulchan Aruch. Wearing gloves would have the same status in Halakha as wrapping a cloth around one's hands. The author of the Shulchan Aruch writes this halacha as a disputed view because it is not a universally held view, but it is the Rand's opinion, since the Rand thinks that the glove is battle, it is auxiliary to the hand, whereas if one ties a cloth around the lulav, then even the Rand would say that one does not fulfill its obligation because it is not a lekichatama, it's not a proper taking. So if, one, if somebody did take the lulav in this way, they should take it again without a bracha. 
according to Rashi, gloves are not a chatzitza, as chatzitza is only a problem when it's around the thing that one wants to take. So it would be permitted to shake the Abba Minim with the glove. According to the run, chatzitza is not a requirement for Abba Minim, but Lakichatama is, and gloves are butter to the hands for the purposes of Lakichatama. However, according to Tosfos, gloves would be a chatzitza. They're not a base yod, they're not a holder for the Abba Minim, as they are not an attachment to the side of the Abba Minim, and they're not an accoutrement to beautify the mitzvah. So according to Tosfos, there is a problem of chatzitza, and since one has violated that requirement, which according to Tosfos exists with Abba Minim, that is a problem. The Shulchan Aruch and Mishnah Brura admit the possibility of using gloves, but prefer not to rely on this leniency because of Tosfos' stricture. Certainly in the straitened circumstances in which we find ourselves, it would be better to rely on the run and rashi and shake with gloves than not to shake at all. If that is the only option, one should shake without a bracha, since it is doubtful whether one can do the mitzvah in this way, and when there is doubt about saying a bracha, one should not do so. If one is subsequently able to shake Abba Minim without gloves, one should do so, but again without a bracha, because here again there is a doubt, perhaps one has already fulfilled his obligation by shaking the Abba Minim with gloves. In the merit of our Torah learning together, may it be blessed with good health, the end of this coronavirus, may next year this question not be relevant at all, because please God will all be able to have our own Abba Minim, or if need be, share with other people with no problem, and we'll also be able to shake hands after the end of each service. Thank you all for listening. Hags and to you all.